uh, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present our uh, preliminary uh, results of uh, phase two window of opportunity study in uh, human subjects with uh, uh, a FAC inhibitor in patients with resectable mesothelioma. And this was a collaboration between, uh, which is funded by Veristem uh, and us, uh, and uh, the authors indicate that. Uh, these are my conflicts. Uh, vast majority are industry grants. I'm disappointed to hear that I'm not on the scientific advisory board for Veristem. We'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> as you all know, uh, mesothelium is a terrible disease, and we have to have better solutions. And uh, as in my talk yesterday, for those of you who have been there, I think that uh, we have actual, not just an opportunity, but a responsibility to rapidly uh, work together and go through uh, promising biological drugs uh, to help our patients because uh, I think we pretty much maximize the efficacy of surgery and chemotherapy. And in fact, Paul Bass just presented data that suggests chemotherapy not only is not very effective, but it can be bad in certain cases. Uh, and uh, our idea, uh, and this is originally a, a investigator initiated clinical trial, was to uh, take patients who are surgical candidates uh, who are in good functional status and well categorized and uh, offer them a brief uh, treatment uh, trial with biological drugs, get a biopsy, let them recover, and then operate on them. So you have tissue before, during, and after with a primary endpoint of uh, biomarker discovery or validation. You heard about FAC, uh, and this drug uh, shows promise in a number of cancers, including uh, ovarian cancer and mesothelioma, and you can see down below the various studies that are either planned or ongoing, including uh, the command study that Paul Bass just talked about. So uh, for this particular study, our primary objectives, as I mentioned a minute ago, were to uh, look at biomarker response, determine uh, what is the biomarker that predicts response to this drug, if, if there is a response to this drug. And this is what the trial was powered for as a phase two. Uh, and uh, part of the primary objective was to look at uh, uh, inhibition of phosphofac, changes in stem uh, cell markers, uh, alterations in other markers, and also uh, sequence and deeply analyze genomically the specimens before and after uh, surgery. As, as Paul and Ravi earlier alluded to, uh, FAC is thought to be particular, particularly uh, effective in NF2 negative background, which the product of NF2 is Merlin. So if you have Merlin absence, which is approximately 40% of mesothelioma cases, uh, f the FAC inhibitor is supposed to be particularly active in that. So. Uh, one of, that's one of the things we looked at. The secondary objective was uh, to uh, determine the safety of, of this drug prior to surgery and evaluate uh, the pharmacokinetics of the drug and look to see if there's any tumor response. And this is the design. Uh, again, as was mentioned uh, earlier, uh, the factinib went through uh, phase one successfully with uh, relatively mild toxicity, the MTD was not reached, but was assessed as high as 700 milligrams, and we chose a 400 BID oral uh, drug. Uh, we gave it for between 10 to 14 days because we wanted to have an appropriate window for the biopsy, and I'll talk about that in a second. So the patients had to have had a PET scan within four weeks of initiating the drug. They had to uh, then start the drug, be on it for 10 to 14 days, uh, and at the day before, or as they were finishing the drug, they got the PK analysis, and they got a PET scan, and immediately a core needle biopsy performed by Dr. Gill, who's here, uh, who is our chest radiologist. And then they waited 30 days, and then they underwent uh, uh, surgery for mesothelioma. Uh, we initiated the first uh, study started in late December 2013. As of last month, we enrolled 10 subjects, uh, and our plan is to enroll uh, 10, 20 to 25 total. Uh, the eligibility criteria included uh, patients confirmed uh, malignant pleural mesothelioma confined to one chest with no evidence of metastatic disease, negative metastinoscopy, uh, patients who, by all our criteria, are resectable in as much as technically possible, although we included both uh, sarcomatoid biphasics and epithelial. Uh, 
and uh, uh, patients who've had sufficient uh, uh, cardiopulmonary function and no other major comorbidities that they could withstand the operation and of good functional status. Uh, exclusion criteria included uh, prior chemotherapy and radiotherapy for mesothelioma or any treatment for other major malignancies in the last five years, uh, as well as uh, the standard CVAs, hepatitis, uh, uh, pregnancy, or breastfeeding. So uh, the first 10 patients uh, uh, all completed the study. Uh, the gender distribution is 80-20. It's nice when you have 10, you can do the percentiles by in your head. Uh, the histology was appropriately distributed, 4, 2, and 4, epithelial biphasic and sarcomatoid, and they had pretty good uh, ECOG functional status. Now, in terms of complications or uh, adverse events, as we call it in oncology, uh, we only had grade 1 or 2 uh, events, and they're all listed here. We didn't have anything greater than grade 2, and they all resolved spontaneously. Um, now, as Paul Bass alluded to, uh, the primary objective was to see uh, the biologic markers, and the first biologic markers were inhibition of uh, stem cells, and as you can see, an inhibition of FAC, as you can see, uh, looking at the pre-biopsy and the post, and, uh, or the intra-operative biopsy, uh, uh, we uh, could see uh, certainly an effect uh, of uh, inhibition of phosphofac. Now, when you look at other stem cell markers, uh, you could see that in, and we had good enough pre-biopsies in seven out of our ten patients, uh, the first three we learned. Um, the CD133, which is one of several uh, markers for stem cells, was uh, reproducibly reduced in most of the cases, in five out of seven cases, and so were other uh, cell cycle uh, uh, stem cell markers, rather, as opposed to what Paul just described, uh, that those uh, particular markers were increased after PEM cis. So that's one difference. So that's the primary objectives. So so we've demonstrated that we can give the drug, give it safely, and get a reasonable response, at least on the function of the drug. What about the patients? So. Uh, Surprisingly, uh, we uh, got significant responses even in 10 to 14 days. And uh, the first biopsy was in the PET scan were done Christmas Eve, and that was a very pleasant uh, Christmas present for Veristem, uh, as Joanna told, told us again yesterday. So these are the responses based on uh, modified resis as well as SUV, both measured by our radiologist as well as by an independent radiologist uh, uh, who we don't know who it is, what makes them independent. Uh, these are some examples. This is the, the uh, most significant response that we've seen. Uh, and you can see Ritu Gill put together, uh, you know, matching PET scans. And this was almost 49% decrease in tumor. And there was uh, a 10 or 20% decrease in SUV as well. Another patient, this was the first patient. This was a 24% decrease. Uh, and this guy really made me feel happy because his, when he came to surgery, this thing just fell out, uh, which may be just a random tumor quality, or at least I hope that FAC might have something to do with adhesion of the tumor to uh, the chest wall, but who knows. But he had a good response as well. And this is another patient. He had about 10 or 20 percent decrease in the tumor and in the SUV. So uh, we got some uh, interesting response because it only happened in 12 days. And uh, we're not really sure if it's due to stem cells or to something else because uh, it may be too fast for stem cell, but something worked. So. What can we conclude from a very small study with a promising biological uh, drug? Well, it was well tolerated. All patients came to surgery, underwent pleurectomy or extra pleural luminectomy. About two or three were unresectable at the time of surgery, but 
we've published our rate of unresectability at about 26, 27 uh, percent anyway. So two or three is about the right range. We've demonstrated that the fact may inhibits FAC activity uh, biologically and that it uh, reduces CSC markers, presumably by inhibition. We did see significant reproducible tumor reduction in a very short period of time. So we do recognize it's a very short trial, very brief period, very small number of patients. We are continuing the trial. This is an in, and, and we applied for and got exemption from the IRB to uh, modify the trial to go to 35 days, seven days rest, and then surgery, given that the drug disappears within less than a day from the system. Um, we anticipate uh, 10 to 15 additional subjects for discontinuation of, of this phase. It used to be a phase one, a phase two, now it's almost phase one, two, if we're changing dates. And uh, currently, we are looking at additional stem cell markers and doing comprehensive genomic profiling of the specimens uh, uh, to get some clues and continue to assess the biomarkers because you remember the hypothesis was this works in an NF2 negative background. Well, some of the responders were not NF2 negative, which just goes to tell you just, just because you have a great hypothesis of how something works may or may not be how it really works. And that's why one needs to do these kind of trials. I, I think this is an example of why these kind of trials are important and can be very valuable for us to rapidly go through uh, promising biological drugs in mesothelioma. And again, in a single center, in nine months, we did 10 patients. If we had four centers, we can do two drugs like that a year. And that's truly what the, we as a community of treat, treaters of mesothelioma ought to do. Uh, and as usual, I have one of my safari animals uh, with us. Thank you.